All right, this new video is dedicated to all you folks out there who've been crying to me to produce a better quality video. Um, what I've got here is a USB cam hanging out on a piece of metal beside my workbench, hopefully getting it close enough so you can see the, what's going on. It is 640 by 480 resolution and I'm capturing to 320 by 240, which is all that YouTube supports anyway. Also using a Telex headset with a boom microphone so you can hear me better. Hopefully this uh, will satisfy your requirements and if you need a better quality video than this, please send me a digital video camera. That is a donation I would be more than happy to accept from you. Anyway, I've had a few questions to uh, from people to describe to them the individual components that have gone into the making of my prototype, so I just wanted to give you a quick history. Um, <coughs> I'm a junk collector, and some of the stuff that I've collected spans decades. This uh, plexiglass assembly that I use for my rotor is simply a plexiglass disc with a plexiglass ring glued to it. It is obviously a factory assembled piece, it's not something that somebody home brewed. Um, got this from a job, it has a red scribe mark in it, which tends to make me indicate, uh, tends to make me believe that this was some sort of cover that may have been a uh, cover for some sort of dial indicator that was supposed to be environmentally sealed. Has three holes drilled in the bottom of the plate, they are exactly 120 degrees out and I use those for alignment all the time. Very, very handy. Inside I now have, instead of six magnets, I have four magnets, which is a little easier to operate by hand. The magnets are cobalt samarium. Got them from the same job. I have quite a few of them. They're pretty strong. They are one inch long, three quarters of an inch wide, and one quarter of an inch thick. They have polarized on their faces. If that's north, then that would be south. In this particular rotor arrangement, I have them organized in alternating fashion. So this might be north, south, north, south, and so on. Um, they are simply held together with 1 16th of an inch thick, or uh, for you metric folks, a couple of millimeter thick. 3M double stick adhesive tape. I can pull them off and rearrange them at will. There's nothing holding them in there that's going to prevent them from flying out. They are inside of a ring, so centripetal force will actually hold it against the outer outer ring. I don't really worry about it too much, unless I get it spinning so fast out of control that it self-destructs and causes me bodily injury, which I hope to avoid. The ring of metal that you see inside is simply a um, strip of metal cut from I'll show you this a spool of high permeability magnetic shielding that was installed in a DC electric motor to prevent stray electromagnetic fields from interfering with the electronic equipment around it the electronic equipment around it was a TIAC reel-to-reel -reel tape deck, mid-70s vintage, from which I also harvested this nice little spindle assembly. Uh, th you'll notice that um, there is a groove in the bottom here, which is, was a belt that drove, I believe, the tape counter. This gear was probably attached to the motor somehow, and this spindle assembly, I believe, was part of the take-up reel try to show this to you inside we have um, this is hard hard to show you might be able to catch a glimpse of that there's a ball bearing inside the shaft opening and it protrudes in about one quarter of the ball bearing diameter the ball bearing is held in there by a spring which is secured by the set screw in the side of the spindle assembly and what that does is it allows me to sit it on top of the shaft harvested from the tape player you'll notice that there is a, a groove cut in the shaft 
that receives the ball bearing as you slip the spindle on top of it and holds it in position, keeps it from falling all the way down, keeps it from popping off. There's a bearing inside. This spins very, very freely. And in this machined aluminum piece right here, this I believe is what connected directly to the tape reel um, clamp assembly or whatever it was on there. It is literally held onto this piece of wood by hot glue. The opposite end of the shaft you can see recessed in the opening where I have it glued in. Practically everything on this prototype is held together either with sticky tape, hot glue, uh, or hmm, what else? Well, that's about it. Just sticky tape and hot glue. That's all, all I use to hold this thing together. Oh yes, one, one other thing. The, uh, the magnet was harvested from a Seagate hard drive. If you take a hard drive apart and pull the plat platters off, take the, the uh, head drive assembly, the layers out, you'll find one of these magnets, which are polarized rather uniquely. I think I've explained it in one of my other videos, but I'll go over it again here quickly. They're polarized on the broad side. If this is north, and this is south. And on the back side would be the opposite pole. There is a backing plate behind it that prevents the stray magnetic lines of flux from escaping, so all of the magnetic field is concentrated to the front of this magnet. What comes next is to create some sort a, of bobbin assembly for the bottom of the rotor and I'm just using this spool of solder as an illustration of what a bobbin assembly might look like. The dimensions obviously will be different because it needs to receive this ball bearing assembly which will ride up and down. The, the opening of the bobbin will create a, a raceway with bumps on the top and on the bottom that will create the cam effect as the rotor spins around. The distance from the center of rotation is approximately one half the distance to the outer perimeter of the magnets in the rotor. So that gives us a mechanical advantage of two to one. When as the rotor is spinning, this is moving up and down, the rotor has a mechanical advantage over the bearing of two to one. Couple that with a lever that will be attached to the bearing assembly down here and you will end up with another mechanical advantage and the lever alone of two to one giving us a total mechanical advantage of the magnet over the stator of four to one which should give us more than enough motion of the two to three millimeters that I need to move this up and down to create continuous unidirectional motion which is obviously the objective. The part that I like best about the whole process is being able to share my ideas and creativity with others and being able to spark their their creativity as well acting as one mind toward one goal internet's great and of course the one the one goal is to save the earth to fill our wallets or actually prevent it from being pilfered by the energy lords and uh, wouldn't hurt if we bankrupt the Middle East that might be fun don't you think the uh, weight that I've been using as a flywheel is a sealed lead acid battery RB1270 I weighed it tonight it weighs five pounds when I take it and uh, sit it on top of the flywheel lengthwise, I get the greatest inertial load. It will accelerate much faster if I stand it on end. But putting the battery on its side gives me a better flywheel. And then, of course, all I have to do is move the magnet up and down. I'll get to the zero crossing point right here. And just give it a little kick, and off we go. And if 
I go any faster, I probably don't have this centered well enough, it will fly off and break my oscilloscope or my computer monitor or something, so I'm just going to stop it. <laughs> hope you enjoyed the little show. The uh, next time I have a uh, video to put online, I hope, t I hope it to be with a bobbin underneath the rotor, driving a cam, actuating the stator, sitting here running all by itself. Stay tuned.